Have you ever considered that your greatest spiritual growth might come from your most challenging relationships? We often associate spiritual growth with tranquility, peace, and harmonious relationships. But what if I told you that the most profound growth often comes from the most turbulent waters? Yes, you heard it right. Your most challenging relationships can be your greatest teachers, pushing you to evolve, to expand, and to grow spiritually. We all have had that person in our lives who seems to push our buttons just right, the one who brings out our deepest insecurities and fears. For many women, this person is often a male narcissist. These individuals, with their self-centered behavior and lack of empathy, can make our lives feel like a constant struggle. But here's the thing. These relationships, as challenging as they might be, can serve as catalysts for significant personal and spiritual development. They force us to confront our deepest fears, to question our values, and to make difficult decisions. And it is through this confrontation with our darkest shadows that we can truly come to understand ourselves and our spiritual path. The transformative power of facing adversity is incredible. When we face our challenges head on, when we refuse to back down or run away, we begin to unlock the true potential within ourselves. We realize that we are stronger than we ever imagined more resilient than we ever thought possible. These challenging relationships push us to establish and maintain boundaries, to cultivate self-love and compassion, and to develop a spiritual resilience that can weather any storm. They challenge us to transcend our ego-driven reactions and embrace humility and empathy. So the next time you find yourself in the midst of a challenging relationship, remember this. The darkness is not a punishment, but an invitation an invitation to grow, to learn, and to evolve. It's an opportunity to delve deep into the shadows of your soul and emerge with a greater understanding of who you are and what you're capable of. As we plunge into the darkness of these challenges, we can uncover profound lessons about ourselves and our spiritual journey. In the end, isn't that what it's all about? How might a relationship with a male narcissist teach us about boundaries and self-love? You might be asking yourself this question, and it's a valid one. The experience of being in a relationship with a narcissist can be a challenging one. Often, these individuals can seem charming and charismatic, but beneath the surface, they may lack empathy and have a deep need for admiration and validation. This can lead to situations where we feel our boundaries are being crossed, our feelings dismissed, or our self-worth undermined. This is where the opportunity for growth lies. When we encounter people who challenge our boundaries, it forces us to reassess and strengthen them. We learn to say no. We learn to identify what is acceptable to us and what isn't. We learn to stand our ground, even when it feels uncomfortable. This is a crucial lesson in self-empowerment. By setting boundaries, we are asserting our worth and taking control of our own well-being. But setting boundaries is just one part of the equation. The other is cultivating self-love and compassion. It's about recognizing our intrinsic value, regardless of how others may perceive us. The difficulties we face in these relationships can lead us to question our worth, but it's in these moments of self-doubt that we must choose to love and value ourselves even more. It's about understanding that we deserve respect, kindness, and love, and not settling for less. It's about treating ourselves with the same compassion we extend to others. This journey towards self-love and compassion can be a challenging one, but it's also a deeply rewarding and transformative one. In this process, we learn to rely on our inner strength. We learn that our worth is not dependent on the validation of others, but on our own self-perception. We learn to love ourselves, not in spite of our flaws, but because of them. This is the spiritual lesson of self-empowerment and inner strength. In the face of adversity, we learn to value and protect our own worth nurturing a deep sense of self-love and respect. This is the power of boundaries and self-love. It's not just about surviving a relationship with a narcissist. It's about thriving in the face of adversity and emerging stronger, wiser, and more loving towards ourselves. What can navigating manipulation teach us about spiritual resilience? In the labyrinth of life, we may come across individuals who present us with a unique challenge, manipulation. This challenge, often presented by male narcissists, is a tough one, but it holds invaluable teachings about spiritual resilience. 
Manipulation in essence is an attempt to control or influence someone's actions or emotions. It's a test of our patience, our strength, and our ability to stand firm. The manipulative tactics of a narcissist can be subtle, often disguised as concern or love. They can make us question our perceptions, our values, and even our self-worth. But here's the silver lining. These encounters can serve as a catalyst for spiritual growth. When we navigate through manipulation, we learn to tap into our inner wisdom. We start to recognize the patterns, the veiled attempts at control, the subtle undermining of our confidence. As we do, our spiritual discernment sharpens. We become adept at distinguishing genuine care from manipulation, truth from deceit. This discernment is a vital tool in our spiritual journey. It equips us with the ability to navigate not just manipulation, but any situation that challenges our integrity and our values. Moreover, these experiences can amplify our spiritual intuition. Intuition is that deep inner knowing, the voice that guides us when logic fails. It's the whisper of our soul, guiding us towards truth and away from harm. As we face manipulation, we learn to listen to this voice, to trust it and to follow its guidance. Navigating manipulation also strengthens our spiritual resilience. Resilience is our ability to bounce back from adversity, to rise above challenges, and to keep moving forward. And just as a muscle strengthens with use, our spiritual resilience grows each time we face and overcome manipulation. In essence, the encounters with manipulation are not just challenges, but opportunities. Opportunities to grow, to learn, to evolve. They are stepping stones on our path to spiritual resilience, discernment, and intuition. Through these struggles, we learn to trust our intuition, growing stronger and more resilient in our spiritual journey. How does forgiveness play a role in our spiritual healing? This is the question we delve into in this part of our journey. Forgiveness, often misunderstood as a sign of weakness, is in fact a powerful act of spiritual strength and liberation. It's not about forgetting or condoning the actions of those who have wronged us. Instead, it's about freeing ourselves from the heavy chains of resentment and bitterness that weigh us down. When we choose to forgive, we choose to take control of our narrative. We refuse to let past hurts define us. Instead, we use them as stepping stones on our path to spiritual growth. We transform our wounds into wisdom, our pain into power. But let's be clear, forgiveness is not an overnight process. It's a journey, often a long and winding one. It requires patience, courage, and above all, self-love. We must first forgive ourselves for any perceived shortcomings or failures. We must show ourselves the same compassion we extend to others. This self-forgiveness is the first step towards healing. Now let's talk about release. Release is the natural outcome of forgiveness. It's like a bird set free from a cage, soaring high in the sky, unburdened and unhindered. When we release resentment, we make room for peace, joy, and love. We open ourselves to new possibilities and experiences. We step into our spiritual freedom. Release is about letting go, not just of negative emotions, but also of the need to control outcomes. It's about trusting the process, trusting the universe, trusting our journey. It's about surrendering to the flow of life and embracing whatever comes our way with grace and courage. So to answer the question we started with, Forgiveness is not just a part of our healing, it's the heart of it. It's the key that unlocks the door to our spiritual liberation. It paves the way for us to step into our power, to reclaim our narrative, to write our own story. As we forgive and release, we create space for healing, growth, and spiritual freedom. Let's remember this as we continue our journey, taking with us the lessons we've learned, the strength we've gained, and the wisdom we've uncovered. Could encounters with narcissists challenge us to transcend our ego-driven reactions? It's a thought-provoking question, isn't it? And yet, the answer can be a resounding yes. Dealing with narcissists can indeed inspire us to rise above our egos and instead embrace humility, empathy, and compassion. Let's delve deeper into why this is the case. When we interact with narcissists, we often find ourselves caught up in a dance of power and control. Their inflated sense of self-importance can, at times, trigger our own egos, tempting us to respond in kind. Yet, this is where the opportunity for spiritual growth lies. Instead of getting entangled in ego-driven reactions, we can choose to respond differently. Choosing humility in such situations requires courage. 
It means acknowledging that we don't have all the answers, and that's okay. It's about accepting our limitations and recognizing that we too, like the narcissist, are works in progress. It's about demonstrating grace under pressure, even when we're being pushed to our limits. But humility alone isn't enough. We also need to cultivate empathy. Empathy allows us to understand where the narcissist is coming from without condoning their behavior. It helps us see the wounded child within them, yearning for validation and love. This perspective can shift our attitude from one of resentment to one of compassion. And compassion, dear friends, is where the magic truly happens. When we offer compassion, we are not just sympathizing with the narcissist's plight, but we're also affirming our own humanity. We're acknowledging that we're all interconnected, all part of this vast tapestry of life, each with our own struggles and triumphs. Compassion allows us to respond with kindness, even when faced with unkindness. So yes, encounters with narcissists can indeed challenge us to transcend our egos. They push us to embrace humility, empathy, and compassion, three powerful spiritual lessons that can profoundly shape our journey. In transcending our egos, we open ourselves to the spiritual lessons of humility and compassion, ultimately enriching our spiritual journey. So, the next time you find yourself dealing with a narcissist, remember, this too can be a pathway to spiritual growth.